It's incredible, a scientist has discovered the first signs of life on the exoplanet K218b using the James Webb Space Telescope. The fascinating details of this study reveal, for the first time, what the living conditions on this distant world are really like. Large quantities of water and gases, which clearly originate from life forms on Earth, paint a crazy and fascinating picture of a distant world. Thanks to the precise analyses of the James Webb Telescope, it is as if we were studying an extraterrestrial biosystem up close for the first time. What did we really discover there, and what details shocked the scientists? The exoplanet K218b was discovered many years ago by the Hubble Space Telescope, but Hubble had its weaknesses. The old space telescope was unable to provide us with details about distant worlds. Now, with James Webb, a new era of exoplanet research has dawned, and for the first time, we have real data and evidence of what is really going on at K218b. Webb spectrometer analyses reveal every little detail. We know that this planet, 120 light years from Earth, lies within the habitable zone of its star and that it's about 8.6 times the size of Earth. We also know that K218b has a hydrogen rich atmosphere, which makes it a particularly interesting object for research. K218b is a Hycean world, a completely new category of exoplanets representing rich water worlds. These planets may be far more suitable for life than our Earth, predominantly covered by water, with tropical temperatures and perhaps some land masses. These planets could harbor an incredible diversity of life. For a long time, these ideas were just speculation, but now a scientist has proven that life can exist there. K218b has four biomarkers discovered in its atmosphere. It sounds amazing, for the first time, we know for sure of a planet with so many biomarkers found in its environment that life on this world can be considered almost certain. James Webb spectrometer analyses showed evidence of methane. Methane is particularly interesting because it typically persists in atmospheres for no more than two to three years before it is broken down by solar radiation. This suggests that there is a source that continuously replenishes the methane in the atmosphere of K218b, which in turn raises the intriguing question of who or what is producing this methane. This gas is a biomarker because it is predominantly produced by living organisms on Earth. Living methane sources on Earth are mainly microorganisms. Methanogenic bacteria live in oxygen-free environments such as swamps, bogs, rice fields, and the gastrointestinal tracts of ruminants. These bacteria decompose organic material in the absence of oxygen and produce methane as a byproduct. Termites also harbor methanogenic microorganisms in their digestive tracts, which produce methane as a byproduct of the digestion of wood and other plant materials. Cattle, sheep, Goats and other herbivorous animals such as deer and camels contribute to methane production through similar digestive processes. Other major sources of methane are wetlands such as swamps, bogs, and rice paddies. Anaerobic decomposition by methanogenic microorganisms that release methane also takes place in the sediments of lakes, rivers, and oceans. There are probably large deposits of methane hydrate in deep ocean sediments. Methane is therefore a gas of life, and yet it does not necessarily have to be proof of life, because as we know, there are also large quantities of methane on Saturn's moon Titan, for example, which originates from liquid cycles there. However, no evidence of life has yet been found on Titan. Compared to K218b, Titan is also a dark and cold world, and it lacks water. On K218b, water may even predominate, and methane seems to be only a byproduct. Another fascinating find was the potential discovery of dimethyl sulfide, or DMS for short, on K218b. This gas, which is toxic in large quantities, is produced on Earth by certain algae in the oceans. It's therefore another important biomarker, and whenever it appears together with water and methane, the probability of life is always greater. DMS is mainly produced on Earth by biological processes. The most important sources are marine phytoplankton species and certain algae. These algae produce dimethyl sulfonyopropionate, which is broken down to DMS by decomposition processes involving bacteria in coastal ecosystems such as salt marshes and mangrove areas. Microorganisms decompose organic material and release DMS in the process. Grasses in salt marshes have been found to emit DMS, and certain lichens and mosses that grow in coastal regions also produce DMS. 
This shows very well how much the production of DMS on Earth depends on biological activities, and these processes almost always take place in coastal habitats. If DMS is found on a water planet, there is an obvious link to possible coastal habitats, plant growth, and at least the presence of simple organisms such as bacteria and microbes. In addition to these discoveries, Webb's analysis of K218BS atmosphere revealed an abundance of carbon dioxide and the complete absence of carbon monoxide, which also has interesting parallels to Earth's atmosphere. These chemical signatures could further indicate processes associated with biological activity. On Earth, for example, photosynthesis, in which plants convert carbon dioxide into oxygen, respiration by microorganisms that release carbon dioxide, and methanogenesis, in which methanogens produce methane under anaerobic conditions, are typical of this type of gas evolution. The data from the James Webb Telescope also indicate that K218b has a thick hydrogen atmosphere. This type of environment favors water that is slightly warmer than on Earth and increases the possibility of life-friendly conditions. Real life on K218b, how will we succeed in detecting it? Wouldn't it be fantastic if we now had real evidence of life on this exoplanet? Proving life on K218b would be a monumental shift in our understanding of the universe. Scientists want to do just that. The first step would be to conduct further detailed spectroscopic analyses of K218bs atmosphere with the JWST. Technological innovations are essential for the accurate detection of life on exoplanets like K218b. Initial analyses can help identify more specific biosignatures, such as seasonal variations and movements in methane, oxygen, and DMS levels. Simulations could calculate which forms of life would fit the gas spectrum of K218b. To do this, it would be necessary to better study corresponding emissions on Earth and determine suitable profiles. Computers could match these profiles with the gas combinations on K218b, providing possible scenarios and forms of life. In addition to spectroscopy, we could use techniques like transit photometry to study the chemical composition and dynamics of K218b's atmosphere. This method allows us to measure tiny changes in the star's light as the planet passes in front of it. Such data could provide important clues to seasonal changes or climatic patterns, which in turn could indicate biological activity. Future telescopes equipped with even finer sensors could penetrate deeper into the atmosphere of water worlds like K218b and provide more data from the deeper layers. The James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, is already a significant advancement, and soon, the extremely large telescope and the 30-meter telescope will provide even more detailed data. As our telescopes continue to improve, we can hope for more and more details about distant worlds. The best way forward would be to develop space probes that could be sent directly to K218b. These probes could have advanced instruments on board to collect and analyze samples from the atmosphere and possibly the surface of the planet. However, these missions would take an extremely long time at a distance of 120 light years. If we could one day accelerate probes to the speed of light or even faster, such missions would be conceivable. Until this is possible, we will only be able to simulate the environmental conditions of K218b in laboratories on Earth. By recreating the temperature, pressure, and chemical composition of the atmosphere, scientists can determine whether known terrestrial microorganisms could survive and possibly thrive under these conditions. Such experiments could provide further exciting clues about what kinds of life might exist on K218b and how they might have adapted to the environmental conditions there. In the coming decades, the search for life in our own solar system will also play a significant role. Probes equipped with drills will fly to icy moons like Enceladus and Europa. Their fully automated drilling systems will drill into the thick layers of ice and release floating probes with cameras into the suspected oceans beneath. If we find life on these moons, it would increase the probability that there are life forms on numerous exoplanets. K218b is not the only candidate currently in the spotlight of exoplanet research. Numerous other exoplanets also hold promise in the search for extraterrestrial life. One such exoplanet is TRAPPIST-1e, located in a system with seven Earth-like planets. TRAPPIST-1e is in the habitable zone of its cool dwarf star meaning liquid water could exist on its surface. With its rocky nature and the potential for a dense atmosphere, TRAPPIST-1e will soon be closely studied by the James Webb Space Telescope.
If further biomarkers are found, it would be a significant discovery for the scientific community. Another main target in the search for life in distant star systems is the Kepler-186 system. Kepler-186f, in particular, has aroused the interest of scientists. It is the first Earth-sized planet discovered in the habitable zone of another star, with similar dimensions to Earth and the potential for liquid water on its surface. LHS 1140b is another promising exoplanet located in the habitable zone of a red dwarf star. With its high density and potentially dense atmosphere, LHS 1140b provides an opportunity to learn more about the habitability of planets in other star systems. Proxima Centauri b, the nearest Earth-like planet, orbits a small and comparatively faint star. Though it is quite close to its star, it remains in the habitable zone. Initially considered the hottest candidate for a super-Earth in space, it was later found that the star Proxima Centauri emits frequent and strong bursts of radiation towards its planet, which could be very damaging. Despite these observations, researchers have not entirely lost sight of this world. A special privately funded research project aims to send tiny nanospacecraft to this system, just over four light years away, within the next 20 years. This could potentially provide us with real images of the surface of an exoplanet for the first time. The quest for understanding and discovering life beyond Earth is an ever-evolving field, driven by continuous technological advancements and innovative research methods. The possibility of finding life on K218b or other exoplanets like TRAPPIST, 1e, Kepler, 186f, LHS 1140b, and Proxima Centauri b is an exciting frontier that may reshape our understanding of the universe. As we develop more sophisticated tools and methods, our capacity to explore these distant worlds and uncover their secrets grows ever more promising. Subscribe to the channel now and be part of every new video that brings us closer to these groundbreaking discoveries.